I'm going to make the sacrifice. And it wasn't even so much of me just wanting to do that because I knew he was going to um, maybe reward me later. I just wanted to really be able to speak to his people efficiently in the right way that he wanted me to. That was my real goal of why I did that. And of course, I'm not going to lie to you, I, I need to cut weight for my weight to me, so I, that's a good, it's easier for me. It, it, it's, it's happened, it's, it happened a little bit easier. That's a little bit of a reason too. But on a serious note, he says, tell people how much I really love them. Yeah. No matter how much they've sinned in the past, the worst of sins, what, I mean, the, the darkest, deepest place you've been, no matter what kind of insecurities you have, I love them. So there's no need for no insecurities. There's no need for any, there's no need for any reason for you to feel like, or he wants you to understand there's no reason for you to feel like he's not gonna love you because of the sins you've committed. You can't go back to him after you've committed those sins. Because in the Bible, I mean, he gives you grace and mercy. Yes. He gives you favor. He's a God of favor. He's a God of grace. And it's, it's, so, it's so amazing because really, to be honest with you, when I was thinking about all of this, I was like, how am I, how, is this even going to make sense? But he literally said it in such a profound way, sequentially, the right way that I wanted to convey it back to y'all. So my next point would be, yes, he gives you grace. He gives you love. He gives you mercy, favor. While, at least while you're still alive. While he gives you another chance at least. So as you're a sinner and you're still alive and you're still living, you have to know that you have to confess your sins to him. Uh-huh. Open yourself up to him. Yes. And you open yourself up to him when you realize that he really truly does love you. Right. And you can go back to him. You don't have to keep living the same sins over and over again. Right. Because mm-hmm. you feel like it's easy for me to just keep on sinning, you know, because I can't go back because I'm not really ready, really ready to give up these sins that I'm committing right now. I'm not really ready to go back. I don't want to change right now. And it's like, I don't want to keep on going back to repenting and sinning and going back to repenting and sinning, even though he's just going to really keep on giving you grace and mercy as long as you're alive and well. And my next point would be also that most people want to stay in sin, mm. especially, you know, younger people. This is a youth conference thing. Most younger people want to stay in sin because they want to follow everyone else and mm. look like everyone else. Mm. Wear that type of mask that you've been wearing for a long time because you don't want to feel like an outcast. You want to feel love through someone, maybe through popularity, and it's really older people too. I mean, this is, I, I can't, I mean, I can't say that I'm not talking to myself. So you want to feel popularity because that's the love that you think you need. You yeah. totally omit God's love from your life. You feel like you don't need him anymore. You're popular enough now. You get all the girls now. Mm. Everybody knows you. You know, I want to go to the, I want to, I want to go, you know, clubbing with everybody else. I want to, I want to be, I, want, I mean, that's, because it's a void that you have and you feel like you have. And you want to fill that void. But God's just saying the whole time to just come to me. Confess your sins to me. Humble yourself. And so let me get into scripture. Um, first of all, so I can get myself together. Y'all t- tell two or three people, God loves the real you. God loves the real you. So get rid of that man. So get rid of that man. All y'all didn't sound like y'all said it, but okay, whatever. Um, let me see. All right, so whoever has their Bibles and if they can, in the back, whoever's in the back, uh, turn to Ephesians chapter 2. 
We'll start at verse 1. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespass, trespasses and sins, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the, of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, mm. among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ. By grace we are saved. And I'm just gonna stop, I'm gonna stop there. Because of course, as I reiterate again, my first point of us being saved by his grace. And knowing that we can go to him when we've sinned, we can rely on him to forgive us of our sins. And it's good when you realize it's before it's too late. And when I say, and when I say it's too late, I mean, have y'all ever seen this movie? I don't know, whoever's Goosebump, Goosebumps. Mm. Fans, probably? All right. So, it's an episode, I think it was an episode where this girl, it was Halloween, basically. Mm. She's wearing this mask, as, we all, as they all do in Halloween. Wearing a mask or whatever for, for the whole night. And I think it was like a, I don't know, if it was like a gremlin or some mask or something like that. Or, I mean, a type of mask that, you know, would kind of, I mean, it was pretty devilish in a way. So she's wearing it the whole time. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, she, she falls asleep. And I think the next day she wakes up, she can't take the mask off. Wow. And of course, her, you know, her window of opportunity was gone. She should have taken the mask off before because now she looks hideous. Now she looks, she looks ugly. She looks like the mask that she wore during the, during the you know, Halloween festivities. And, you know, as Christians, a lot of times, we tend to use the grace card a lot. And, I mean, me being included, all of us, we tend to use the grace card a little bit too much as a crutch, as, as Pastor Mitch, my brother Pastor Mitch says all the time, you can't use that thing as a crutch, though, for too long. And the reason why I feel you should is because your window of opportunity could close before you even know it. Mm. The grace is not there anymore once you've taken your last breath or you've had a car accident 